And now is exactly the point of time you can see he pivots around his center of gravity. With the last bit of drive, this is exactly how you should do it. Use your upper body weight. And you see you're not using the upper body weight from your shoulders. You're using it from the lower section of the trunk. And if you look very closely, you can even see Alex abdominal muscle lower abs being activated. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to a indoor rowing video analysis. What an interesting topic we have today. This is Christoph. He's from Poland, not quite 16, 180 centimeters tall. Personal best on the indoor rower over 2K is 650, 650. Now, before we head on, I would like to ask you as the arm training community, look at the video. Give this guy some feedback. Let Christoph know what are some things that you think he could work on and he could improve upon. Let's just play this for a couple of rounds. By the way, Christoph also gave me footage permission and also the cat was okay with being in the video. If you spot the cat, put it in the comment section below. All right, my 50 cents. Three main construction sites. The first one, here at the catch. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Uh-uh, not anymore. And you wonder why, what's the difference? The position is, is about the same, and that's the problem. Let's just go back a couple of frames. By the way, if, if you wonder why YouTube sometimes loads slowly, I have probably the fastest internet connection you can get in Vienna. And Vienna is connected to one of the backbones. So it's probably not my internet connection. You see this? There's a problem in the posture. There's a problem in the body weight distribution. It, it may look okay. You may think, ah, the shoulders, I don't know, something. It is the way you distribute forces. And the first aspect I would like to point out is not the back, but the abdominal muscle group and chest bone. These two elements stabilize the back way more than the back itself. There are two main muscle chains we can focus on right now. So the one is the chain on, you know, on the back and the one is the chain in the front. It's, it's, it's very, very, sim very much simplified. Things are much more complicated, but for, uh, for now, this is about okay. And most people try to stabilize the back only with the muscle chains here in the back, but that's not that's not the full rent. What you need to do is you need to activate the antagonists. And Christoph, what you're doing, you're not activating the antagonists. There are agonists and antagonists. So the player and the counter player. And if I want to do, let's say, a, a biceps curl, I need the triceps as well. Not as much, but I need it. In your case, as you would like to transfer force during the drive through the entire body, you need both muscle groups about evenly, not quite, but about evenly. And you need to prepare both. Now, the problem is that your um, abdominal muscle groups all the way to the chest and chest bone is not activated on the way forward. And by this, I don't mean you should tighten up. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for elevated posture. You need to breathe. Your lungs need space. And if you sit tall in the lower area of the spine, you can breathe and your body weight is exactly where it should be here now you may wonder why why is it the tension here in the back and no tension in the abdominal muscle groups leads to a high center of gravity because the center of gravity always follows the body tension and as there is not enough tension here in the lower section of or the medium section of your torso but you still need a bit of stability. The way you get stability is to contract muscles right there. And this is probably what all of you have realized. It is the shoulders. The shoulders are a bit more tight than they should be. It's not that loose and relaxed way forward, but heavy. You know, it's more that a bit 
overly anxious, prepared on a way forward. And you may wonder why, because if there is no tension here, there's tension there. Is it automatically so? No. I will get to the point why this is the case just in a moment. This is still the preparation. You will see why this is happening um, during the drive. Because the preparation is in anticipation of how Christoph transfers forces throughout the drive. Am I being too complicated here? Let me recap. So, the problem is, only tries to get enough stability with tension in the back muscles. Prepare tension. Abdominal muscle groups not active enough. Therefore, more tension in the shoulders. And therefore, the weight, the center of gravity, is not on the seat. The center of gravity is around this area right there, and here in the back, it's separated. And in rowing, we need our full center of gravity here. That cannonball I'm referring to quite often. So, what happens now, as your center of gravity is in the shoulders, there is no raising of the arms, because it's not possible. As there's a lot of tension, you're basically pushing forward the handles. And as you push forward, you cannot prepare for a pull. The only way to raise your arms is by being loose. But if you push forward, you cannot push something and raise at the same time. You would need to have shoulder muscles like Popeye. So you gotta be relaxed, raise your arms and be prepared for a pull. Relaxed shoulders are only possible if the center of tension is in the lower section of the spine all the way to the chest bone and therefore your center of gravity is low. Now things connect, it makes more sense. Now let's watch what happens. You try to have a long catch and as your center of gravity is all the way up here in the shoulders, you just push forward, 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 forward and now there is a moment where there is a bit of lag time here at the catch. See, there's waiting time. Exactly at this moment, you are releasing a bit of that push tension within your triceps, shoulders, um, lat. And you try to bring arms a bit up, but there's no time. So you start to drive and you, you lift your arms a bit. See this? Exactly. But now you're looking for connection. This is something I'm gonna give you a lot of credit for. You don't, you don't wait until your hands are all the way up. You just start to connect wherever you feel it. It's a very good way to roll. However, there's still that, that tension here. As you're, you're not transferring force this way. Let me draw a nice line here. So this is what I want. This is where the main, you know, this is where the main force should be transferred. Right there, so whoa, massive. You gotta work against a heavy, heavy, heavy flywheel on a tiny bar that is straight. It's basically a deadlift every stroke. So you wanna use your weight. But with the shoulders being so tight, you can't use your weight. You have to rely on power. See, it makes a whole difference. Now, what happens now with you is your forces are not traveling this way. They are traveling, let's make this yellow, this way. And this is where you have the first, it's like a, a meeting point of forces, if you want to call it this way. It is, this is where you have a congestion of forces. They come into your body. The back cannot really transfer everything. So you tighten up right there. It's not that much because you are being careful. It's not like you want to you know, rip everything apart at the catch. You have a lot of feeling, it's very good. But you have very tight shoulders here. And these tight shoulders lead to the point where you can never really get a nice solid drive. This is why your personal best is 650 and not 635, which it could be with the same effort. The forces move on. A bit of it is transferred now through the abdominal muscle groups, which have to react, but also with the back. And you see that the back is slightly round here because the, the abdominal muscle groups and the back are not really coordinated. And by this I mean, it's like a shockwave of forces traveling through the body, we just have to hold on somehow. And it's not like the forces can travel in one line through the body, they actually 
go right into the shoulders. The shoulders try to cope with and you know, wrestle with the forces a bit. And then something ends up here in the legs. And eventually, the more you move on, let's just play that video a little longer. You see this, let me draw your attention to this specific muscle group right there. Let's go get back a couple of frames. Arms pretty straight. And if you look very closely, you see this exaggerated. Yeah. Just go back. And Christoph, I bet coaches have told you not to tighten your arms at the catch. Once more. Or is already there starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is so tight, you can never hang loose. You can't hang loose in your triceps and being tight in your shoulders. You've got to be somewhere relaxed in your shoulders and let the let the lat transfer everything into your center of gravity, which you have to prepare on the way forward. I hope this makes sense. So it's just a symptom. You try to cure that symptom. You try to keep your arms straight. Now by keeping your arms straight, you actually have to let go of a lot of potential power your legs and your body could apply. It's like every catch, yes it is exhausting, but every catch you're not using your full potential. Every drive you're not using your full potential. This is a very strong face of the drive and you can't really use everything you've got because the weak parts here tighten up and block let me draw a nice line so you understand what I mean. Let me make it pink. So, your feet into your legs, hip. There we have tight shoulders. This is where you can float freely again. And now, let me draw in yellow a breakage. This is where you tighten up. This is in your way because you have prepared in a way where you're stiff on the way forward. I'm, I'm going to talk about how to solve this, but for now, understand how forces float. This is the way they would be traveling, but they can't. They're blocked here because there's tension. And you see the pattern is the same through the entire drive. And what we see at the finish, and I bet a lot of you have seen this, is there's no real upper body swing. Why? Why should an upper body swing? It's not loaded. It's like shooting a gun that is not loaded. There is no bullet. Because everything is here. You see this tightens up more and more and more. Right now, the legs are in a wonderful angle to just wah, accelerate that air fan. But the arms are breaking it. And the arms are being overloaded. Consistently overloaded. And the more they're being overloaded with the huge leg power here, the more they tighten up. And the more they tighten up, the less leg power actually is being transferred onto the, onto the flywheel, the air fan. And therefore, there's not a real backswing. So you're missing the turbo. This is why I think you can easily knock off 15 seconds on your 2K personal best. Sure. You're just going to use your muscles in a more intelligent way and in a more, um, in a more natural way. Right now, see? There is no real, you're moving backwards with your torso, but you are not, you're not using this as a mass anchor, as an accelerator, as a mass accelerator. It's just not happening. The opposite is true. Your arms are always, always just trying to wrestle that drive through. And this is also where your head stays up front. It's, it's a working stroke. It's not a playful stroke. And of course, the arm is going to finish it off. Christoph, don't get me wrong. By no means are you rowing badly. Very well. A lot of people would be very happy if they could row the way you row. However, you're certainly interested in peak performance. How to get the maximum speed. Now, here is what I think you should change. It starts right here. This is how you solve it. At this position, pause. If you find yourself being in this position, not comfortable, loosen up. And if you want to make your shoulders loose, make something else stable. So your shoulders can rest upon something. Chest bone, lower abdominal muscles, 
center back muscles. So here, here, chest bone. And this needs to be very relaxed. Okay, that's important. Now from this position on, let's delete this, move forward. What helps a lot, and it even works on the linear arc, is in order to be straight with your arms, loosen up, have your elbows slightly loose, hanging to the side, slightly loose on the way forward. And sometimes what I do when I get on um, on, on the biro, I try to, I, I don't go forward with my hands. I go forward with my elbows because my elbows are much more directly connected to the, to the lat, this, this baby right there. So this is what I'm looking for. Um, by no means I think you should do this, dislocate your shoulders. No, no, no. Just elbows forward, heavy, strong in your torso, but not tight. No, breathe. Stable. And the more you move forward, you should always, up to you know, from this point on, always make sure that you are you know, rolling forward with your hips and, and, and your pelvis and that your center of tension, inner tension and stability is where you would like your center of gravity to be. So you should feel like, hey, this is where my weight is. This is where my weight is. This is where my stability is. This is where my stability is. And you see the last circle is more on the front part of the seat. It's not so much here in the rear part of the seat, it's in the front part of the seat. This is what you should load on the way forward. Okay, good. Let's delete this and move on a bit. On the way forward. And now, Im imagine your shoulders were loose. So your center of gravity and tension were low. You move to the catch. You are relaxed. All you need to do is this. And now you just lift your arms just a bit and now as your shoulders were loose now you can relax and all the force travels right into your center of gravity which is right here this is where it should be this is where it should land so you slowly accelerate that center of gravity you slowly accelerate it and then you do towards the finish whoop, this like a surfer Come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me, shoop, accelerate. This is how you make that erg fast. It's simple. The linear erg relies much more than anything else on leg drive and upper body weight, not on shoulder tension and shoulder power. This is Alex, he's part of my team. He's one of my athletes and this was recorded one or two years ago when he was part of the Austrian national um, under 23 lightweight men's quad. So I was not coaching him directly at this point of time. He was in the national team and a bit of his technique changed there. However, you can still see some of the good elements he has at the catch. If we just follow Alex a bit to the catch, the way he uses his upper body to finish and then on the way forward, and he wasn't concentrated then, it's just the beginning of a shooting. See, on the way forward, his center of gravity is pretty low. His arms and elbows are pretty relaxed. His shoulders are not tight. He prepares his arms, spreads the wings. At the moment his seat turns around, he's activating lat and shoulders. I don't think this is perfect because the way this quad um, was coached in, they, they, learned the, they learned to row the so-called trampoline effect, which is pure devastation for the shoulders, in my opinion. So by this, I mean the following thing. They learned to be very aggressive with the legs at the catch, and you could see this tightening up here in the shoulders. If Alex had kept his old technique with being a bit softer at the catch, there wouldn't have been a need to tighten up the shoulders that much. Nevertheless, this is still high quality rowing. And it shows how to do it. Here, towards the catch, loose, raise the arms, be prepared. 
you know, if, if he hadn't had such an, such an aggressive first leg drive, he would have been perfectly in the same position. And if you follow that drive along, you see, there is no change. You can actually see how these forces are flowing through the body. Legs, legs, center of gravity, massive. Exactly where it should be. Lat arms. This is exactly how you should do it. If we follow that stroke a bit more, you see. And now is exactly the point of time you can see he pivots around his center of gravity. With the last bit of drive, this is exactly how you should do it. Use your upper body weight. And you see you're not using the upper body weight from your shoulders. You're using it from the lower section of the trunk. And if you look very closely, you can even see Alex's abdominal muscle lower abs being activated. Because there's no other way. Using his center of gravity to propel the boat and finish off that stroke. This is how you should be doing it. And the only way to do it, let me delete this here. The only way to do it is with the right preparation. You see, shoulders already relaxed. Elbows lead out, loose in his hands. Loose in his hands. Still, center of gravity is very low. Low, 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 hands up. Prepare to drive. And then a stupid trampoline technique here at the kitchen. So this is how I think you should be doing it. I hope this helped you. I hope it makes sense. And I hope this is something you can work on. And I hope this was also interesting for you as my community. Thank you very much for sending that footage. If you want to send your footage, go to armtraining.com. There's a dedicated section called video analysis. And if you want to send me footage for video analysis on YouTube, Instagram, wherever I'm going to post it, so the entire community benefits from it, I'm going to do it for free. Join the Facebook indoor rowing group to talk about indoor rowing, post your splits, post your technique. This is where I post a lot of updates about indoor rowing video analysis and events. And if you like so, join the Zoom live indoor rowing session next Saturday at 15.30 CET Vienna time. Until then, have a very good time and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.